Now you can play Tarkov without directly engaging in every fight, of course. But sooner or later you have to engage in PvP. And when this happens, we can't just fix everything with a nade. No, we have to use our gun from time to time. And then it's very important that we can aim precisely. And of course, good aim is dependent on many factors. But one of the most important and the basic one would be your mouse sensitivity. Because you need to have a sensitivity that allows you to do basic tasks like move around very quickly, do flicks, trace and track enemies for a longer period of time, and of course do everything in between and in combination to hit difficult shots. But how do you get your optimal sensitivity? That's the topic in today's video. But first we have to talk about the DPI, EDPI and the sensitivity. Now dots per inch just means how many pixels do I move my cursor whenever I move my mouse by one inch. We don't need to know all the details, but basically the higher the DPI, the faster your cursor moves or your character in game spins around. Now, depending on your mouse, the DPI is different or you can change it. The difficulty with DPI is just that when we have different DPIs, it's difficult to compare our sensitivities. Because let's say you have a sensitivity of 0.8 and your friend has a sensitivity of 0.4 but you have different DPI, so what does this mean? Is it the same? Is it different? Is it different in what way? That's why we use eDPI, which stands for Effective DPI. Of course, it's not perfect and it varies from game to game, but it allows us to compare the values that we have with the values of our friends, pro players, and so on. So just multiply the DPI that you have with your in-game sensitivity, and there you go. Again, it's not perfect and it doesn't really work above 1.0, but you shouldn't have a sensitivity that high anyway, so nothing we have to worry about for now. So when we look at the pros that came from other games, for example Shroud, he has a DPI of 450, a sense of 0.41, which results in an eDPI of around 185. Then we have Summit with a DPI of 400, sense of 0.45, which results in an eDPI of 180. So pretty close to each other and that's not a coincidence. Now let's have a look at EFT veterans. For example, Pestilli. He has a higher sense than most other players, with an EDPI of almost 250. And then we have Landmark with an EDPI of 168. So again, more in the range that we have seen before. Now what should we choose or what can we learn from that? Now from personal experience, I would say a good starting point is an EDPI of 200. We will go over why in a second, but to find the sensitivity for your DPI, just, just take 200 eDPI and divide it by whatever DPI you have and there you go, that's your sensitivity. Now this is not final, it's just our starting point and should allow us to do precise flicks and all the other things we need. Now it's important to know that in Tarkov you don't need to have a high sensitivity. It's pretty similar to Valorant in that regard that we usually know where the danger is coming from, we don't need fast adjustments. Of course it can always happen that our cross map placement is off and that we need to do a fast flick, but usually that's not the case in games like Valorant or Tarkov. To show you a game where a high sensitivity is very common and recommended, here you have Apex Legends. Even looting in this game is way faster than anything that we do in Tarkov. In addition to that, we have abilities that allow us to travel 360 degree around us. We have a lot of players that are moving around, so we have a lot of targets that switch very quickly. And all of that is the reason why in this game we need a high sensitivity to move and react faster. But in Tarkov, we don't need that. We don't jump around <laughs> through the air and whatever, so we need a basic and lower sensitivity. Alright, back to the 200 eDPIs. Now, the important part is that whatever you use, let's say you use wrist aiming, then of course the movement of your wrist, if you use arm aiming, your whole arm, or the limitations of your mouse pad, whatever it is, it should be that one movement, one swipe with your mouse allows you to do a 180. Now that's the minimum. So one swipe with your mouse has to be enough that you can turn around your character. You shouldn't go below than that with your sensitivity because as soon as you can't turn around anymore, when somebody pops up from behind, it's unlikely but it can happen, in this case you will be dead. That's why we don't go lower than that point. So adjust your sensitivity a bit there if necessary, but just don't go too high. It can absolutely be too high if you do more than 360s with just one swipe 
uh, that's way too high. I would recommend that you stay as low as you can with your sensitivity so that you can be as precise as possible. Now, of course, the question, how do I even notice once I got to a good point or got a good sensitivity? But before we talk about that, one word to mouse acceleration, because that feature is horrible. <laughs> it basically influences how fast your cursor is moving, depending on how fast you move your mouse. And that's just horrible for gaming. You won't be able to build muscle memory <laughs> when something like this is in place. So go to your mouse settings in Windows, go to additional pointer options and deactivate the enhanced pointer position. Turn that off right now if you have that. Now back to the topic on how do I recognize whether the mouse sensitivity that I got is good for me or not. Now the easiest way would be to use an aim trainer of any kind. For example, aim labs, it's for free. And there you can, for example, practice tracking. And the goal here is not to score as many points as possible, but to check if it feels natural, if it allows you to do the movements that you need to, if it causes pain or not, and so on. Same goes for flicking, for example. It's not important to be the fastest and get the most points here. Rather, it's a very easy tool to tell you whether your sensitivity is a bit too high or too low and how you adjust to it over time. For example, when you see that you're always overshooting, so your crosshair goes a bit too far and you have to travel back a bit, then that's a sign that your sensitivity is a bit too high for you right now. So there you could lower it, for example, and see if it works better. The opposite would of course be when you undershoot, so the crosshair lands in front of your target, and that would be a sign that maybe you need to increase your sensitivity a bit. That's a good way to see kind of what your instincts do. And it's also, of course, great to improve <laughs> in terms of aiming in general. It also allows you to track your progress, which is pretty handy and very important if you plan on, you know, keep getting better over time. But, of course, if you don't want to use aim trainers and third-party software, whatever, you can do it in Tarkov, kinda, with the usual offline rate on factory, just port, tacked and cursed, or whatever your PC can handle, then find an open area and try to react to the scaffs that are pushing you. And then try to see if it works. Does it move too fast, too slow? Can you control recoil? Can you hit targets that are behind cover, so precise shots? Can you do everything that is necessary with the sensitivity that you have right now? And again, it doesn't matter if you do it well or not, just if you can do it, if the sensitivity allows you to do turns and precise shots. But of course, it's difficult to know if you're doing well or not. And that's why I want to talk about the goal or what we are trying to achieve. Now, imagine there are three areas. We have a green area, which is pretty small and de depending on your skill level, of course, varies in size. But that's the area basically where we want to be able to do very fast and very precise flicks. So everything that appears in front of a crosshair inside this area is dead. <laughs> And of course, professional players, for them, this area is pretty big. They can flick very precisely and fast on a pretty large area. But that's not the goal for now. The goal is to develop an area for yourself in which you feel very, very comfortable on hitting your target. That includes, of course, flicks. So if something appears and you're kind of off, we can move our mouse very, very fast on point. Then we have the orange area. Now here the idea is that you can move moderately fast, but it doesn't have to be on point right away. So mistakes happen inside this area. We have to correct at the end to hit our shot. And again, that's completely normal even on professional level. Everybody has their comfort zone and well, the orange area is <laughs> not inside that. But the sensitivity that we choose should allow us to move to the direction of our target very fast, but not as precise as with the green area. And then at the end, we have the red area. In this area, we just want to be able to move around very unprecisely, but fast. So for example, I got shot here. I know it's somewhere on the left. I don't really know why, where it is. So I turn around and as you can see, it was completely off. I looked at the tree or don't know, I had to correct and that's completely normal. I turned around based on sound and that's just unprecise, but the sensitivity that you choose should allow you to do a very quick motion to turn around and after the initial spin we see where he is and can adjust but again we have to be able to turn around very fast 
If the sensitivity is too low, we can no longer turn and react to things that happen behind us. And that's the point where I would say increase your sensitivity a bit. You can see it here in this example as well. I was looting. Are you good? <laughs> I get shot from behind. I turn around and again, it was off. But now we are in the green area where I feel comfortable. So that allows me to do the next flick, which is on point and kills the target. Now those are the three areas that I want to master. So you have a small area where you very, very comfortable and can hit your shots very fast with flicks. We have the orange bit bigger area where we can move towards our target, not as precisely as inside the green area, but still. And we have the red area where just we can turn around very fast, but it doesn't have to be precise at all. Nobody is flicking 180 headshots consistently. And when we have a sensitivity that allows us to do all of those things, we found a good sensitivity for us. And again, usually less is more in terms of sensitivity because the lower sensitivity, the more precise you are at the front area, the green area, the orange area that we've talked about before. Because with a very high sensitivity, those shots are very, very hard to hit. So a lower sensitivity will benefit you there as long as you can still spin around. So I hope this video helps you out in finding your mouse sensitivity or maybe you found some issues that you have with your aim currently in this video and now know how to adjust it. Either way, if you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Don't forget to thumbs up the video as it really helps out the channel. Subscribe for more and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care and good luck in your raids.